Hello everyone, I'm um, very sorry I'm a little late uh, because I had a very uh, little technical issue. Uh, I tried to double stream on Twitch for the first time today. Uh, I just created my account like two days ago, but it's a failure. So I will have to check again. I'm so sorry for those who wanted to watch me on um, Twitter because well, it's not working. Sorry about that. Uh, I need to check the settings maybe. So uh, today we are going to make a door. So I made a um, hi little Dika and hi Alana. Thank you so much for being here. Uh, I met a, a poll on the, um, my Patreon about which item uh, you wanted me to do. And the second and third were very close, but the door were very first. It's uh, the most difficult item. So thank you. Anyway, so I, I chose a simple one. So it will be the meshing will be very easy and that's nice because then I can focus on explaining how to do the mesh cut weight so the door will actually uh, animate and also the cutout the cutout is uh, quite difficult since the um, star wars updates in september it's not as difficult as it seems especially when you just have a square like we will have to do but it can be a bit confusing when you start i have a new settings my second screen now is on the left so I have to uh, read your chat and I have to make a better setting. Anyway, so um, there. So this is the door we are going to do. And to start, we are going to clone, well, a door. So I'm opening Scene 4 Studio and I will choose Create 3D Mesh here and type door. So the doors are complicated because they have different mesh cuts depending on which side of the wall they are, but also because sometimes they have two texture, two different textures from the front side and the uh, back side of the door, which is very confusing and kind of um, uh, kind of make the uh, weight of the file heavy because it has two textures, the same texture for both sides. So I don't know why they did that. So to solve that, I'm using this door usually. So it's the plain wooden door. It's uh, the easiest one um, because it will have only one texture and we don't need any glass on this door. So this one has one mesh. So I'm going to create my file here in my live. See live stream uh, wooden door and we are going to observe how a door is made it's quite important to take the time to um, study the door before making it why is it so slow today there so this is my door as you can see uh, compared to um, other objects we have three different uh, mesh cut and two drop shadow. So I'm going to export it so we can look at it more precisely. So I hit five to uh, go in this uh, view. I don't know how to call it in English. And I'm going to display uh, whatever shortcut I type you can see here. So as usual, I delete the camera lamp bricks I don't need and I don't like messy file I just go in solid view and so here you have zero one two three five if we delete everything we will see what actually each one so the zero it's the in-between part meaning when you make a door, you will have stuff that are outside and stuff that are inside. The reason for that is when you play inside with the wall downs, you won't see what's outside. And uh, same for the opposite. First one is the front part. 
second one is the back part and then we have the drop shadow from the back and the drop shadow from the front. So I'm usually write, writing it down in my notepad here where I write everything so I can delete everything. So So you say, let's understand the store because this actually broke last part of my stupid brain. Your brain is not stupid. The way they are doing it is kind of crazy. It was already a bit confusing before because the way we had to make the cutout was a bit confusing. But now it's, uh, uh, well, if you like math, then it's, it's fine. Anyway, so zero is the in-between. One is the front part. Two is the back part. And three and four are the drop shadow. I'm going to delete the drop shadow because I don't like drop shadow. Sorry. And for now, I'm going to keep two, three, just to keep the proportion. Because later we will study the vertex group. The vertex group will indicate the game, which part is supposed to move when animated or not. So for example, we will have transform bomb, which is the part that will remain. If I click select, I can see it's the frame. And the, oops, the um, binder swing is obviously the door. So if I select it, it selects the door. So when we will be done meshing the door, we will have to assign those vertex. So in game, the door will move properly. <laughs> well, don't worry, Matt doesn't hate you. It's probably just a big misunderstanding. Misunderstanding. Anyway, let's start. So, um, the door in The Sims, uh, the, the EA base game door, are always a little bit uh, small. I like when they are a bit taller. So, for now, I'm going to hide it and I'm going to create a cube. And I'm going to create a cube by hitting Shift C. It will go put my cursor back in the center because I like things to be very centered. So Shift A, and I'm creating a cube. Now I go in the front view, hitting one, and I will just merge them because only one is enough. And I will approximately take the proportion of my EA door. So I go in the edit mode by hitting tab and then SX to reduce it. GZ1 to put it on the floor level. And then I'm going to... Um, so I have printed my door, so I have it just here, but... Um, if you want, I can have it. Uh, can I? No, I can't. Hmm. I don't know why I can't use the chat here. It's, it's it's stupid. Anyway, let me know if you want the picture. If you don't, then we're fine. So, um, so this and if I go in the side view three. And S Y. I'm just going to there. Another thing I don't like with EA door is they usually have a very big frame, and I like my frame to be not that much out of the wall. So I never remember exactly. So what we are going to do now is just follow EA, and when we are going to test it in game maybe we can adjust it because i don't remember where the wall here i think the wall is supposed to be somewhere around here but just to be sure because if the door is inside the wall it that will just be a hole and it won't be pretty so this is the beginning of our frame now we are going to select the front view and the back view and we are going to extrude hitting E. And if I extrude 
and now resize it will go in the inside so i need to keep the proportion of the y axis so by hitting shift y it will only reduce my um, selection on the x and z because i said rescale s shift y meaning minus the y axis from view it's easier hello kim paisy thank you for coming it's an app that it is not definite when you tamper with the blender a little i agree like um, when i started it became very frustrating because you want to do something it looks so easy when you're watching tutorial and when you try it on your it doesn't work but then you get used to it and and then you get used to it so um I'm going to reduce just like this and I forgot the Y and I want a perfect diagonal here like this and then I won't need this because this will be the door later so I just delete the faces and I hide those Why it doesn't want to merge? Why it doesn't want to merge? Anyway. And this I don't need either. So I delete. And this I don't need either. Instead, I want those four vertices to be on the same side. Oh, you hi cherry but you really didn't miss that much um we just talk about the fact that the door have uh, many different parts the front the back and the middle so but we will go back to it uh, where we where we need to cut it so you didn't miss that much so because i'm um i have my pivot point on the origin I can choose here the 3d cursor origin and when I will do SZ0 it will automatically put all my points where I have my 3d cursor meaning on the zero origin so that's nice and now I can just cut uh, my mesh so I select those four here and there easy peasy I don't know why we actually do those faces because we never see them. Um, there. So that's, that's very, that's very easy. That we, our frame is very simple. There is nothing. Maybe later we will add a little emboss because I like um, when it has a little bevel. So now we are going to do the door. So to earn some time, I will directly select this and hit shift D so it will duplicate the shape the shape sorry of my inner door and same as before I want it centered or oh, not really I don't want it centered not yet so I just move it a bit and I'm going I'm going to hit F to actually fill um, the shape I have duplicated and I'm going to flip the direction because I'm on this side. And with the three, uh, uh, three view, which is the side view, I'm going to extrude it. So um, it's the E and it will create, um, it's supposed to create a cube, but as you can see, I'm going to hide it so we can see it better. It's uh, upside down, so I just select everything and hit recalculate. And now it's how it's supposed to be. There. So the door is basically done uh, because it's just a rectangle. But to help us with the texture, we will add some um, seam, some edges. In my city, it's only 
past five o'clock in the morning and I said to me, oh, that is so nice. You set a clock to come. Wow, you're very brave and early bird. My boyfriend is actually waking up at five tomorrow to go in Vienna, I think. So to help us with the texture, we can see that it has a little uh, frame around the door and also this very nice wooden shape. What we are going to do here is use one texture to do the vertical, the no, diagonal line here and one texture to do the diagonal here. So cut this door in four will help us with the texture and we can always remove the line later, but it's substance painter, it will help, you will see. So I will start by making my two frame. So select the front and back, click, uh, hit E, S, Shift, Y, and I just, no, I want this time to go back to my median point. So it's in the middle here. And I just reduce it and then S, Z to have it nicely. And then I will add, um, Hello from Minnesota, thank you for your tutorial. They are so helpful. Well, you're very welcome. It takes a lot of time to do this tutorial because um, my English uh, has become very difficult after I have my surgery of my jaw. And now when I speak English, the is, I don't know, it's very difficult. I don't, I don't know how to place my tongue anymore and I need to practice speaking, so that's good. So uh, control R and it will add a um, ring in the middle and control R, ring in the middle. So now that I see it here, I think maybe our door is maybe a little bit too high, too tall. Hmm. Let's see, you know, what we can actually do is uh, import the image we have at the background so we can keep the exact proportion. So I'm clicking here on background image, add image, open, thank you very much. Uh, I'm very glad if you can understand me. I'm trying as much as possible to be uh, clear, clear enough. There. So I can uh, make it smaller. Like this, it's not very well centered. And up, maybe a little more, a little less, there. Okay, that's nice. Oh, actually, it's not that tall. I think it's quite good because there is a small step here that we won't do. So that should be fine. I think actually it's fine. I have a good eye. So, mm, mm. I'm going to hide it for now. There. And actually, I'm going to create a little bit of volume here, even if we are going to uh, remove it later, but in the texture, it will create a bevel. Hello, thank you for your time and your tutorials are great. Thank you so much and thank you so much for being here. It means a lot. I'm actually uh, thinking about doing this more often and maybe um, just even doing like my regular sets and just explaining all the way when while doing it. So I'm going to hit uh, E and S Y. And I can have a little bit of volume here. And now what we are missing is the 
uh, I think we call it a uh, hand handle or a knob. I don't know the difference. I think a knob is. Hmm. I think the handle a knob is like more round probably. So a handle. So the knob. No, the handle. Um, shift A and we are going to make a cylinder. Uh, because it's very small, we don't have to put a lot of vertices here. So probably um, 10 is going to do. And uh, X90, so I can have it on the right direction. And then I'm going to reduce it. Actually, I'm going to pick this one back so I can have the proportion there. Hmm. My door is smaller. I think my frame is bigger. Okay, let's bring back the frame. I'm going to hide this for now and I'm going to reduce my frame. There. I think it's nicer. Now I select this. Mm. I'm going to use the 3D cursor point. So when I scale it, it will scale uh, from from the well, the origin point. There, and SX, there, that's nicer. So um, Alt H to bring back what I hide, hide, yes, this, and medium point, and I'm going to do first the handle here. So I can delete the back face because we don't see it. And I will reduce it like this. And that's it. Um, I will add right away the edge split modifier. So for those who already know, uh, when you export from Blender uh, into Scenes for Studio, it will apply, I will remove it so you can see. If I click on smooth, it will apply a smooth shading, which makes the mesh very, very ugly. So I use a edge split modifier and I can uh, use this angle to say how much I want um, the edge split to be like sharp. So I can either use this or then I will also be able, I will do it later, but to use the sharp edges like this. But we, we will go back later to this. Now what I'm thinking, it's actually, because we don't have a lot of polygon on this door, I can allow myself to use a little bit more on this one. So I just um, subdivide more and I don't need that one. And I will recreate with my loop tool circle, a nice circle. Um, and now we are going to do the handle the actual handle. So I'm going to hit E to reduce it there. And now I'm going to go in the uh, top view because I'm going to show you a nice thing I, um, I found, a tutorial I find to how to make a cylinder in a curve without, because after, before, no, before, I used to use the bevel to do the like the angle of the cylinder, but it was not very even and not very nice. So I'm going to extrude and then I'm going to put my um, uh, 3D cursor where I want the center of my rotation to be. So let's say here, then I change to 3D cursor here and every time I will uh, rotate, uh, uh, extrude, I will rotate 
um, by uh, the amount I want um, my curve to be. Hi Sid, thanks to your tutorial, I started making my first CC set. Oh, that's nice. That's very nice. That's uh, very great news. And I hope it's uh, the beginning of something great. And thank you also for my hair. It was time to cut them because it took me, it took me too much time in the morning uh, or evening to just like wash there and um, how do you say hunt the year? Like yeah, I had a lot of knots and yes, so nice. Anyway, so uh, extrude, uh, rotating, and usually depending on how much details I want, I can go um, air minus fifty, extrude air minus fifty, fifteen, extrude air minus fifteen, extrude air minus fifteen. until I get to a 90 degree, oops, there. And here I have a very nice and perfect curve. If you want to, if you don't want to use that much polygon, you can just use 30 degrees. That's also nice, but for now I'm going to keep it that way. So the, the texture will be nicer and we can reduce later. So then from here, I go on the, um, Sorry, I go in the front view. Why, why, what did I do? Oh no, that's not the right idea. And extrude, where is my example? I think it's not that big. There. And then we are just going to finish it um, with a round with my media point like this and like this that's it we don't need more so that's easy but maybe it's a bit high and this is where i will bring back to life the ea mesh and i will probably put it on the ea mesh so it fits the animation there and bye bye ea mesh so here for the handle and we are also going to add the little detail of the keyhole here. So I'm just going to, oh, this is another magic uh, shortcut. Um, Alt right click. So I select all around and then control plus and it will select the next, the next uh, row, I guess. Shift DD to duplicate and Z to go under it. Um, there. So it shouldn't be too far. And now we are just going to draw with dues. So let's imagine a, a very um, a kind of cartoony keyhole. I will just select do uh, maybe do three and hit S, Z, zero. So they are, they are all on the same line like this. Then I will use um, J, X to move this one. J, X. And then nope, the other way around. I'm going to use the circle there. And that's too big, so I'm just going to reduce it. It's not very aligned anymore. And because I did um, a lot of modification, I'm not sure they are still on the same plan. So I'm going to hit S, Y, zero, and they are on the same plan. So that, that was useless, sorry. So here I have my keyhole, maybe this will be larger. So S6 like this. And I'm going to select this line and hit E to extrude 
uh, y to go back and f to close it and now we have to align it on the door so the door is here it's this line and voila that's it that's it for the the mesh of the door maybe this is um a little too slick to no too too thick sorry thick that's the word i was looking for so i'm going to put a seam line here so it's easier to select so no that was useless i don't need this i will select everything remove this and then i will remove all my um, long line i am going to keep only the small one like this and if I choose here individual origin and hit S, it will only change um, the size of each selection I, I've made. So then I can make it a little bit thinner, like this. So I'm happy with my door. So now it's time to unwrap. Unwrap is quite easy with this one because it's basically a cube, a square, a cylinder and, um, and a cylinder. So it will be very easy. Before unwrapping, I want to add a little bevel at some places. So let's check the details. Um, it will be probably very, very discreet, but still. So I'm going to hide the door for now. And I will hide a I will add a bevel everywhere except here where I don't need it. Everywhere else will have a little bevel. So I'm going to sharp to make sure my bevel is very nice and neat. And then I'm going to exit the object mode, hit Control A and apply rotation and scale. So I'm pretty sure then uh, my beaver will be evenly everywhere. So rotation and scale and then Control B. And I add my little beaver and I, I hit sharp again. So everything is so beautiful. Then I bring back my door. I will hide the frame. And I will do the same or no, I won't do the same because we won't see it. So it's a waste of polygon and I'm going to unwrap the handle. So I'm going to put a seam line here and a seam line un under the handle because we won't see it. Actually, the clean way to do this is to remove this and select the inner circle, E to extrude and Alt M at center. So this is the way there. Because then we don't have we won't have some end goals which um, the game don't like. So then I can select from the bottom and here. And this one we can have it. We, we can leave it like that way. It's supposed to work. So I'm going to hide the frame and this and this. And for the door, it will be this. And actually, I'm going to delete the back door because I'm going to uh, bake the texture only once and then we will duplicate it so we can save some space on the texture. So for now, the back of my door, I will delete it. So as I showed you before, control plus and delete faces. I'm only going to keep this. So I'm keeping the front. <laughs> Thank you. 
and this and Maxim. Now I bring back everything and we didn't unwrap the, the frame. I applied the sharp line but I didn't unwrap it. So let's hide the sharp so we can see what we do. Usually I like using the bevel to actually uh, cut my mesh. So I'm going to cut my mesh at those places because when, where, when we will apply the wood texture, I can keep all my fiber in the same direction. So I'm just going to separate the, the bottom and then I just need one that will go all around like this, Maxim, and you will see that it will create one big rectangle for all around here. So I select everything and, and I will hit unwrap, unwrap. There. So this is not nice because I want it to be like the more um, regular and flat as possible. So I probably change this to conformal and now it's very much better. But it's still not perfect and I like things to be perfect. So what I'm going to do is go in the front view, select just this face and unwrap um, project front view. And now it's perfect. We won't have this very thin line, but that's fine because I, I don't want to keep it anyway. It's just for the texture to actually mark like a difference. So that's fine for me or else I would have done something about it. But and because this is the main part of our door, uh, the biggest part, I want it to be the biggest possible. So I'm going to hit Control P so it takes all the space on my UV space. And then I will uh, hit uh, first before. I want all my um, islands. So I, an island is like, this is an, an island. It's like a one piece of the puzzle we made with when unwrapping. I want all my islands to be in the same direction. So when I will apply my wood texture, they will all have the same um, direction of the fiber. So as you can see, this one is not in the right direction. And this one either. Now I select everything and I hit Ctrl P again, but this time I will untoggle rotate so it keeps everything in the direction I chose. And I need at least a margin of 0 0.005. And the handle is very small and we still have a lot of space and I like to have some uh, nice shine on it. So this we can make bigger, especially this one if we want the key not to be too blurry. So this can be anywhere we want, so we can just move it there. I'm going to check if I can have, sorry, maybe I can have better shape for this. Ah, this. And wrap anger base where well, anger base is better. So I'm taking all the space possible on my UV map. There. So we are done with the unwrapping. So before continuing, I'm going to save first. Even if Blender is actually very good at saving, it has a, a lot of um, recover, last session, recover, auto save. It's actually quite kind of life saving. And before uh, cutting for importing for Sims for Studio, we are first going to make the texture because, as I explained before, the mesh from a door is cut in three. So we have to make the texture before and then we can mesh everything. Hey, see predictions. 
thank you for being here. And in Substance Painter, and uh, also if you use Blender to bake your texture, if I leave my door here, when I will bake the inside of my door, like the, the, the side of my door, if it's inside the frame, it will be all black because there won't be any light. And when the door will actually open, when the seams will actually open the door, it will be black and we will be able to see it and it won't be pretty. So what I used to do before uh, exporting my uh, mesh to be uh, painted is I select my door and I'm going to move it. I'm after be leaving the stream soon due to lot shedding in my country. What is lot shedding? Thank you for this tutorial. Be sure to check out for stream once it's uploaded. Thank you so much for being here. I don't know what is I actually I'm going to check it. What it is? I'm I'm curious. Lot shedding. I still don't know what it is. Oh, is it the blackout? What a mystery. Um, so I'm going to move it. Um, and to be sure, I will uh, have it back in place. I just move it to a, a very simple a number like uh, jx2 oops why 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 what's happening so i just want the door and the handle and this jx2 there so i just moving it and then when i will be done with my texture i will move it back ah sketch of blackout right well thank you so much for coming and um, hopefully this tutorial will help you already later and i export obg selection only and i don't want right material because i want everything to be on the same texture and export obg so now we are going to do the texture on substance painter which i like very much but since they have been bought by adobe they are now double the price, which is very not nice Adobe, especially uh, since they doubled the price before doing the uh, improvements. So it's still the same um, software, which is lacking a lot of stuff, which was okay before because it was a small studio, but now that it's Adobe, it's definitely not nice. So new, for now I will stay at 2000, but I will um, make it lower after that because um, we don't need that much uh, detail on the door but we will have much more uh, nicer detail at 2000 um, and even sometimes I do 4000 but I just change it at the very end or the computer will be very small for nothing so I just choose my door and okay and I have my very nice door so we will start by baking the mesh maps. What, I, what are those, so I select 2048 to match uh, the size of my texture. They will actually calculate all the space distance and the ambient occlusion and everything. And that will help us with the smart material we are going to use later. So as you can see, it already added some details uh, to my mesh. For example, we have the shadows of where the handle is. And we also have a shadow that I told you where we put it, the extrude here. So even after that, when we will delete this, we, we are still going to keep this little shadow here. So that's nice. And now you can understand why I um, put my door on the side because if not, this side of the door would be all black. 
So I'm going to use a texture. The texture I'm going to use is available on uh, the official website of uh, Source Substance. It's, um, it's not free, but if you subscribe legally to the software, then you have like, I think 30 texture free every, not free because you pay for it, but you have 30 texture every month. So I think it's playing something. Yeah, I'm going to use this one. And the original version has some nails. I don't want the nails and I think I can remove them. Yes, I can remove the nail. So here we are going to see why I did the four part on the door. So first it's a bit too big, so I will reduce it to five or not, maybe not, maybe three, maybe, mm. oh, we'll see later. And I'm going to rotate it at 45. Then I'm going to add a black mask and I will select only Upper, upper one and I think it's a bit too big so maybe four four sounds nice so this one and this one and then I'm going to hi hello I unfortunately miss forever but glad to be here Thank you for coming here and uh, Rava did a very, very short um, uh, live stream because she was uh, unfortunately not feeling well. So I hope that she will be better. I think she's um, watching me from her bed, but I told her to go to bed. I think now she might be asleep. I hope so she is. Um, so after uh, changing the color, I will duplicate it and I will put it on the other side. Um, so I need to calculate because this is stupid. I can't use minus 45. So 360 minus 45 would be 315. There. And we will have this nice effect we add on uh, the door and we will be able also to adjust uh, where the line are because for now it's it's not a side but we can do later because first we need to change the color we are going to leave it for now but hmm. anyway so i'm going to okay let's do the color now so first i'm going to remove the rough or at least lower it because I think the roughness is a bit too high there also what other parameters do I have not that much so usually when you have a um, PBR material uh, especially in Substance Painter, you are able to change the color more easily. But I think this one is is a scan, scanned material, so you can't really change the color. You can only change um, like the uh, HSL, Hue, Saturation, Luminosity, I think. So we aim that kind of um, medium wood or well, actually after the streaming i will do all the swatches so we can have in many color of wood but for this tutorial i'm going to focus on that one and maybe a little less contrast more luminosity no i'm not on the good one this one mm, less contrast and darker darker this and more saturation and probably I want more warm wood so I'm go here no that's too pink hmm. what do you say maybe not enough orange so maybe this was better no
can I maybe use some filter? So I add a filter, it's like Photoshop. So I can color balance and in the mid tone, I will add some red and green to make it more orange and maybe less blue. There's too much green in the shadow. Okay, I think it's nice for now. I hope so. We can still go back later and change our mind. So now I'm going to duplicate it and put back the black um, mask and then select do one and then rotate to this. So to help me, I will probably try to aim the center here of my texture. So I'm going to move it exactly here and this one exactly here. And it's not working. What? It's not very long. What is that? Well, as it seems, and not as good as math as I as I thought. Thought. I'm not happy. Okay, maybe. Um, maybe the angle here is not really. Oh, I know. It's Pitago. I think. Uh, let's try something else. It's not. It's not forty-five. It's more like. Sorry, I'm in my head. Is it? It's not. How did they do it? Sorry. Uh, Actually, it looks a bit better, maybe not here, but yeah, that will do, I think. Okay, so now the other wood part. Actually, I think we are going to use this wood walnut here. It looks nice. So for now, the fiber are not in the right direction. So I'm going to move it them uh, at 90 degrees. And now you can understand why I wanted all my um, islands to be in this direction. And I will put a white mask to remove with this selected the handle. There. So I can make this more close to the color of my door. this I think my door looks more chocolate this is not enough chocolate so let's put more dark darker a bit darker and more saturation I will also remove the or at, at least um, lower the 
normal intensity because it's a little bit too uh, realistic to my taste. There and probably the rough as well. The height, sorry, the height. So I'm going to restart this and the control D to duplicate. Alt Control C to copy the mask and Alt Control V to paste the mask and it didn't work. Great. Okay, so I just delete the Mac and redo it. There, there. Ooh, my computer is very, very tired. Yeah, don't touch anything. Okay, so we just need to change this a, a little bit. And that's fine. And now we are going to do the handle and I have a texture which is very nice, which is called coated metal, like this. And I'm going to put a black mask and select only the handles, like this. And I'm going to increase the flakes and put my handle black. I'm also going to change the shader of my room because this is very orientated. So all this part will be light. My computer is very, very tired. Also my computer after Tesca being open for five minutes. Yes, that's why a lot of CC dials to the computer, unfortunately. I do have a very powerful computer, but even heroes have their limit, I guess. So. Changing the environment map here to the studio. This is one of my new favorite for now. Um, because the, the lighting is more, uh, is, is more equally distributed. So we don't have like one side light and one the other side is um, darker. And we keep a very uh, contrasted light, which will make a very nice uh, reflect on the handle here. We can see on the texture, it will create a kind of a fake light, kind of chomped light. Um, let's check it one last time. I think it's fine. I think I can still create something nicer later of my wood. Hope so. Um, and now the final touch. I will put a little highlight on my edges and a little dark in my ambient occlusion. So I will create a fill layer and remove all this unnecessary stuff. And then I will select a beige, a beige like this and put my um, layer, it multiply and then apply a black mask and then right click generator and I will put some dirt on my door so it doesn't look too clean and fake but the original dust is always a bit too much so i'm going to reduce it and as a result you can see before after okay it's very subtle but before after there looks nice and same but with highlights. So I'm going to uh, remove and, eat and keep only the color 
and then black generator and curvature so for now it's very very cloudy and I will reduce this maybe something like this there and then I will change it to overlay and choose a color that are more close to what I want something like this all right so I think we are done for the texture uh, I don't want the um, overlay to go on my handle so I will just add a paint layer and I will remove this same with the dirt I think because it just don't look too good on metal all right so I'm going to save my texture I will add that I appreciate you going over mask I'm trying to make a post and pants set but trying to paint the item item sizely is super frustrating thing for the tip <gasps> I can feel you so much when I started I had no idea how I could apply um, a mask and how I could select like only the faces and only the meshes and I was painting all my texture by hand it's nightmare uh, I then I decided to watch some tutorials and I learned about the mask and I was like oh, that's it also I didn't know I could have all my materials on one texture so I had like the wooden texture on one texture and it was very confusing and then I was baking separately all the materials well you know we all start somewhere I guess so I'm going to save this in case I want to go back I will go back to it because I will need to make more swatches and also I, I won't do it now because I spent too much time and my computer probably needs a restart but I'm not a big fan of those dark spots here so maybe I will later put um, either another plank, plank one or maybe I will uh, make the planks um, larger but I will go back to it to perfect it later because this is already long enough I don't know how, how long we've been here but anyway so I'm going to save as I did that uh, Streamlabs live here, wooden door. And now I'm going to export my texture. So I go to uh, File, Export Texture. First, I will export the normal map and the roughness map so we can uh, have a perfect item. So I have my own um, settings and I only choose the normal and the roughness. And then I choose the path here furniture no not furniture today today it's live select and export and then my very nice new tip here is to select 2d view and export it and it will actually export this so we don't have to bake anymore and we don't have to go back to blender 2.79 to bake all individual texture so this saves time a lot obviously you will need to set up your lighting before to have the better um, result because as you can see when we will change the H oh, that's that's the word i hate of uh, hdry environment map uh, it will change a lot uh, if you uh, take like one that is colored it will completely change the color of your thing so the one I like a lot is the base one, which is panorama, but it's orientated, which means the right side will be very bright and the left side will be very dark. So if you have an item and you put it on the other side, then it actually conflicts because you will see the light being coming from different uh, direction, which is weird. So this one I use most of the time. I think it's available on my... Um, on my tutorial about texture 
because it's very neutral. It's the perfect one when you do um, like um, something that will be seamless, like for example, when I make fences uh, and they have to be tileable and seamless. This one is perfect, but for item, I like this one. It adds depth. depth. Anyway, so now I go to here and I will have to reduce them because I export them at 2000 and I want that to be 1000 because I think 2000 is too much. So I have my shortcut I made in Photoshop. Maybe I will show you one day a tutorial about how to make shortcuts in Photoshop. So F5, it will automatically save it in 124 pixels and the roughness I will um, invert uh this is not nice because this is supposed to be the same wood and this is very shiny this is not shiny so i probably missed something here meaning my wood walnut is too rough so i'm going to reduce the roughness and re-export the roughness texture That's better. So now I will put it in RVP mode because by default this is a grayscale uh, image. Then I will add a red to have it a little glossy. I could put some blue on my handle to be uh, to make the shine, but I personally don't like the shine how how the metal is uh, rendered in the Sims. So I prefer bake the light and put a very um, neutral specular on it but if you want to do maybe more maxi match object for example and you want to match the sims object that have metal and have this um, blue green shine then you can individually select it it will be this very bright part here but i won't so i select the red channel and i will put it on my alpha channel and i will just lower it a lot like this then put it in sorry far so many question but do you know how to turn off the background i made a balloon table not too long ago metallic texture but the background image from substance painter stayed on the texture yes in Substance Painter, you go to here, Texture Set Setting, no, the third one, Display Setting. So envir Environment Map, you can change the Environment Map. You can also import your own, so you can click on the little plus here, select an image. I can show you that, for example, I have other image, for example. So let's say I want to use uh, this one and then in here you select environment. Uh, I will call it example. And then it will be available here. It's very dark, but anyway. I hope it answers your question. Uh, where were I? So 1000 and then I save this in DDS as specular maps should be saved here. Okay. And then this is my normal map. So this is a little bit too intense for my plank. So what I do usually is I select my rectangle item. I put the opacity to 50% and then I, I will just override it nope no and i changed the color to 128 128 255 which is the neutral purple and it will smooth it a little so it's not too intense then i go in my layer red goes into alpha grows green goes into red and blue and then i reduce the size and I 
save it. Back to our item. So now we will have to cut it to fit um, the specification of uh, the EA door item. So first we are going to put back the back of our door. So no, I'm going to put back the door first. Like this, so GX minus two, not GX minus two. And it's back in place. I will remove the frame so we can see better. And then I will select this, control plus. I will put back my uh, 3D cursor to the origin shift D and having my 3D cursor as my pivot point, I will hit control M Y. Well, it didn't do what I wanted to do. So change of plan because probably my door is not centered because the EA doors are not centered on the red line. So my pivot point needs to be exactly in the middle here. So I select the side here and hit shift S cursor to select it. And my cursor will be exactly at the middle, which means I will reselect my face here, shift D, control M Y. And it will be exactly where we want it to be. We just need to flip direction. Sibre, when you have a chance, can you please pronounce your name? I'm so curious to know if I'm pronouncing it correctly. Ah, yes, because Ravish, Ravishin tried to pronounce it last time and she uh, we, we talk a lot, but she never actually said it. So it's Sibulet. It's a, it comes from, it, it doesn't exist actually. It, um, Sibyl was my uh, nickname when I was playing video games. And bullet in English is a blender. And because I'm so clumsy, people uh, started calling me Sibulet. And yeah. So it's Sibulet. So now because I, um, my, my part is cut from my door, I need to remove the balls to be sure it will be reattached again. You can see like it removed eight vertices, so our door is back again. Hi, Dini Scripps Beam. I love all your CC you make and the way you teach and always helping on this call. You're very welcome and I'm very pleased I'm able to actually help and teach because it's very not easy to do because there are so many different levels of people, people that are learning very fast and other that need more time and other that have more background into creating. So it's very, very difficult to set where the balance, the good balance here. So I'm going to duplicate the handles too. I, I still have my um, pivot point in the middle of my mesh. So shift D. Control M Y, it will actually mirror my mesh on the, uh, compared to the point I have. I just need to once again flip direction. That's super cute. I'm glad I was pronouncing your name correctly. Those two and a half year of French class paid off. Well, that's nice. So you do know some, a little bit of French. Can you still remember thing? Because French is so difficult, usually people study it like for years, but still are not able to actually speak it. Because French is kind of stupid sometimes, but that's it. Anyway, um, so just to check out our polygons, we are at 1400, which is very nice because, uh, as I said in my um, uh, how to reduce polygon tutorial, uh, the limit, uh, my limit, is. 2000 for one tile and the door is one tile. So um, our door is now back together. We will need now to assign the vertex cut. So first we need to create this group. So if I go back to my alpha, so to my EA, sorry, I have transfer boom. So I will copy that, go back to my cube, 
select the plus and paste the transform bone and then I have the door swing like this and I paste it. If we were doing a double door, like um, a door with um, two doors, we will have another one. We will probably have binder swing E and binder swing W, like west and east. So each door will be separated uh, so they can animate separately. So what I'm going to do now is selecting my frame and then I will click on transform bomb, which is the non-moving part and hit assign. And then I will hit control I, I think, and select bind door swing E and click assign. Then I deselect everything and I always check because I always make mistake and I don't want to go in game and see that it's not working. So just to, just for checking, I click on transfer bo select to make sure it selects the frame. And then I deselect everything and click on bind, bind dot swing select. And everything is selected. Yes, first time. Un petit peu c'est mediocre. <laughs> That's very nice. That's actually very nice. So now we cut. Now we cut our mesh to fit the EA specification. So as a reminder, as I said at the beginning of the tutorial, we have zero will be the inside of the frame, the one which is the front and the two which is the back. So to be able to cut this, I will need to add a edge loop in the middle here and hit V. V, we cut the mesh. Now they are separated forever. Same with the interior. I'll hit uh, Alt, right click because it will select the edge loop and this one too. And And this one too. V. And it's cut. Which other video game to play? Actually a lot. I'm a huge gamer. Even if recently I don't have that much game that actually I, that I like very much. Like I, I did the Cyberpunk 2077, I really liked it. But it was, um, it was a bit disappointing. Uh, I was waiting for my new computer to be able to play it at the best uh, graphic on it. And uh, it was obviously very beautiful, but the RPG side was a bit disappointing. And before that, I did the Mass Effect Legendary, and I think I did it like twice in a row. And I did it when I was younger, when it was out. And I think I was not mature enough because I didn't remember that much. And uh, it affected me so much. I cried so much. And it was very, very, very hard to move on to that video game. It's probably the best video game I've ever played. But instead of that, I do any simulation, any, um, uh, how to say, like, the, the building, building where you have to manage resources and build stuff, I love it. And strategy, I love it. I have many, many, many games, I think. On Steam, too much game, probably. Anyway, so let's select the between here. And we are going to take the bottom as well. I don't like those, actually. Where did they put them in the mesh? Oh, separately. Hmm. It doesn't really matter actually because we don't see them. So I'm just going to delete them. And the door is always on the floor. So there, no problem anymore. So I select the inner. I will hit P to separate my selection. So I will call it to make sure 
I will call it between and then I will go on top view and hit Z to have the wireframe view and I will select everything that is front like this you can see it's um, not supposed to do this oh I know I know why so I'm going to hide the frame because I also need to cut the door in half so I uh, added the ring control R and then V to cut it so now alt H to show everything back a front view wireframe view and faces and now I select everything and that's good so I have the front part separated P and the last one will be the back so this is front and this is back so now we need to assign the mesh cut here so as you can see the between is zero front is one back is two I'm actually going to delete this now because I don't need it so this is one this is two between is zero we are going to add some empty plane so for the drop shadows so i just make them very 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 tiny like this and i really hi hit them hide them in the frame there so we don't see it unwrap them and this will be uh, zero one two three and another one four almost done so now i save i go back to my um, package and in mesh import door Ta -da. so that's ugly obviously because we need our texture and now we our texture it looks very nice So what we are going to do later, uh, probably won't showing on this stream because I think it's um, kind of uh, one, one hour, 24, and we still haven't made the cutout yet, is when I will do the, the medium version. So I will obviously remove some edge loop here, like I showed you on my tutorial. Okay, let's do it now. So I removed this, it's not, I don't, I don't need it. And this, I don't need it. I also don't need that much. Oh, I need to be careful about the seam line. Yes. So as I said on my um, reducing polycon tutorial, I need to avoid removing the edge, uh, an edge loop that has a seam in line. So I'm just choosing everything around it like this. This I won't lower because it might destroy um, this shape and so this I, I will let like this. I probably can remove this. Edge loop and I will also remove this. I have too many Steam games as well. One eight hundred and forty and counting long. I really a lot with everything you say. Also, play Cyberpunk this year had a lot of fun, but I was disappointed with the ending. Same. I was also very disappointed with the romances. I thought we ha we would have uh, choices. We don't have any any choice because uh, each gender has one. Um, uh, how to say like one uh, sex oriented choice so river is nice but I would I love have Takemura there I 
the music though were very good I think um, I remove this edge loop There. So we saved uh, 600. That's very nice. So now our door is saved as. I use a very simple uh, way to name my file. If I go to medium, you can see when I switch, switch between the two that we barely see the difference. And we have almost half of our polygon in one and the other one. I won't do the low load for now because um, it's it's not useful. I will just show you how to do the shadow load. So I will bring back my original door. I will remove my two drop shadow plane and I will join my three mesh uh, with Control G. As wonderful as you are with CC, I don't think you had time for anything else. <laughs> well, I do have a life, you know. <laughs> um, uh, I uh, I spend a lot of time on my daily games, and I think I've spent even more times working out. I do a lot of sport. I am CrossFit actually. I go every day, and I uh, put zero here on the cuts, and that's it. That's it for the shadow load. It's very easy. Save as door shadow. And I just replaced this. Sometimes, like for this, it worked, but sometimes it will say that the transport bone is not part of the mesh because usually shadow bones don't accept any vertex group. So that's okay for the shadow load. You just remove them and save them. Um, so now the last part is the cutout. So the cutout is the way we will tell the game where to cut the wall to fit our new door. So when the door is actually open, it will exactly um, make an opening in this door. For the square door, it's very easy because we can use the coordinate already here. And also, uh, when you don't make any arch, the cutout will be nice or kind of nice. Because when um, when you do like wrong cutout, the new system is completely messed up and do some artifact lines and it's very ugly now. So I don't like to do round, glass, uh, round windows anymore. So we have to go in these resources, which by the way, since we're here, we are going to replace, oh, look at that. EA, an EA object with no normal map. <gasps> bad, bad, bad. There. So I just replaced my normal map and roughness map. So we open the model cutout and here we are. What is this thing? So that was before. That was how the door were made before we were doing a cutout on Photoshop and just imported it. And that was easy because we could actually draw any shape we wanted. Now we have to put some fucking coordinates here. So what are the edges? They are the first two edges, which are the limits of our door. And the four later are the actual coordinate of our cutout. So I have this, my camera, I have this notebook. It's especially for the Sims and I put everything I learn about the Sims 4 or Blender or about it in my notebook. And if you want to know uh, something more accurate, I actually made a written tutorial when I started. So maybe one day I will make a video about it. 
where I explain exactly how the cutter works because the order um, of um, you put the coordinates actually matters so I don't I don't know if you see here that let's say that you can see that we have to put the cutout in a certain order so this drawing is in my written tutorial on my website if you want to know more my tip I, I usually recommend for beginners if you want to just do a door and a window and it's square then don't delete it and just use them as they are because the first number is the Y, the second is the Z and the third one is the Y. So instead of being X, Y, Z, it will be X, Z, Y. So what we are going to do is we are going to replace all the X and then all the Z and we don't touch the y. The y is always zero anyway. So the y doesn't matter. So how do I do that? I will pick a distance in my frame in the middle. So if I want the middle of my frame, I will select this face and hit Shift S cursor to select. And my cursor will be in the middle of my frame. Well, those, so teacher here say, yeah, because those intimidated me. No, I have hope. You can have hope. They are not that difficult, especially if you stay to square those. And you can even keep actual EA shapes. So you don't have to move the cutout. So for example, you want to make a window and you're very scared about the cutout. You can just clone a window which shape you like, the size of it you like, and you can recreate your, your window and keep exactly the cutout of the EA size. So you don't have to touch the cutout. And then you can go and try to edit the cutout later. But I will show you how I do a square one. It's very easy. So I select the middle of my frame and I hit Shift S to cursor to select it. And it will put my 3D cursor in the middle of my frame. Then I go in the N tab here and um, I'm looking for the 3D cursor co coordinate. And you will have where the coordinate is, which is X, Y, Z. And I need the X value. So I, I don't need those three numbers. So minus 0 0.5 is nice. So I will copy 0 0.45. And because our door is symmetrical on the x-axis we know that this is minus 0 0.5 and this will be 0 0.5 0 0.45 45 so i will just replace all my x by 0 0.45 keeping the negative when it's here so this is replaced by 0 0.5 and this is 2 and I will just patiently replace all my first number by 0 0.45. So you just need to stay focused and you can't really do this while having the Kardashian on the side, for example, or maybe you can because it's not like it's very active there and then we will replace the uh, z value so here we have two values we have the values with two point something three point something which is the top value and a door is always on the floor if you do a window the window will have a bottom so depending on where your window where where your window here is sorry i'm starting to be <laughs> okay i'm going to drink a little depending on where your window is uh, you will have a bottom coordinate but a door is always on the floor whatever happens so this will always stay zero so we just need the top value so same as before i will select the top face hit uh, shift s and cursor to selected 
and I will copy the Z value here. So same, I only need this value because. Mm -hmm. And I will replace all the values by mine. So 2.18 became 2.46. This is zero, so I don't touch it. This one I can. This one too. This one too. And this one too. One last thing we need to make sure about is uh, the cutout info table. For our door, we have um, a short wall door. Thank you so much for this. And all your tutorial, you have helped and inspired me tremendously on my CC journey. Sincerely, your high poly sculpture protege in Discord. Lol. <laughs> Well, you are very welcome and um, I'm very glad um, I have. When I started, I found it very difficult to find all the resources I needed to learn and everything was kind of uh, everywhere. I, I could almost find anything at all, but I had to look so much and um, there was no, no one to help me. And uh, I spent a lot of alone time trying to figure out why my object didn't work and why the animation was so clumsy and why this and why that. So I'm really happy to help. Um, so the cutout info uh, table will contain two major information. The minimum wall height will change uh, if you can place this uh, door on short, medium or tall wall. So for now it's three. Three is for short, four is for medium, and five is for tall. So if, for example, we were doing a very tall wall, so in the blender, it would, three ties is short, four is medium, and five is tall, we would have to change here to five, or we won't be able to uh, place it. Same with cutout tile width. If we were doing a double door, we're cloning initially a simple door, or even if it was a single door, but it's actually kind of very large single door, we would need to change the cutout here, or the cutout will only uh, cut on one tile. So this is two number important to check. Uh, in our case, we don't need to change it because it's originally, or originally the same that uh, the one we made. Um, okay, I'm just doing the uh, shadow load of the door medium. So I delete the drop shadows and merge my three cuts, put zero, save as door med shadow. Like this. And just for the sake of this tutorial, I will put the medium for now. I will do the low. Hmm. Oh, actually, this is a good example. This is a thing I don't do anymore. Sometimes I do it, sometimes I don't do it. Is the low poly model is actually different. The low poly model is uh, has a different texture. It has only one mesh and it doesn't have any animation and uh, it's because when you're very 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 far away in the game you just replace it like this so you can see that the polygons is like super super small so for now i won't touch it i will edit it later so i will just rename it so sib um, light stream wooden door and i have a name file here where i copy paste same text as always and I always try to put some realistic prices for people who actually play the game so I think it's um so not that fancy door so that will be this um, I can also change the color I will put like this so this is more like that brown and this you can change as well uh, it's where we're supposed to put the curtains. I never use curtains, so I don't really care about where I put it, but just instead someone wants to actually put some curtains on it. You can change the value. And same as usual, um, 
if you actually change where the handles here. Oops, did I make a mistake? No. Um, this is where this is where the door will rotate. This this pink one. So if you want to make sure this is the white the right um, coordinate, I'm going to select the side where it's supposed to rotate and control sh uh, shift s sorry cursor to selected and this is supposed to be the coordinate so i just replaced this there all right so i think we're done i'm just checking again i will do all the color scratches later so we don't need to adjust footprint because it was always already the one from EA. So the footprint is right. This is right. I have the normal roughness. I did the cutout. So I'm going to save and I'm going to test it in game. And yes, I could not find a full instruction until now. This is so helpful. Where well, you're very welcome. The doors are now unsolved mysteries. I really recommend, by the way, to start small. And um, if you if you make doors with window, you have to be careful about uh, which win which door you will clone, because some doors have um, window that will move and some that won't. So depending of if you want the window to actually move with the door or not, it will depend. So I have my uh, test house somewhere, this, I think. One of, one of those three houses are my test house, houses. I'm going to delete the lot and I like it to be day to see what I'm doing. And my door is here. Okay. So we can see that I made a mistake somewhere. That's weird. So I probably made a mistake on one of the coordinates of my cutout. So let's check the animation too. No, lighting. Lighting. There, so I can see what I'm doing. And I'm going to ask her to come here to see if the animation works. Hello, thank you so much for the tutorial and answering my question. You're very welcome. Ooh, I missed it, but I think it was working nicely. There, you can see it's opening exactly how we want and this is working as we want. So the only thing we need to fix is this cutout thing. This, this is not nice. So let's find what's wrong. So I exit it and go back to it to see what's wrong. Ah, that's, that's, oh no.
Hmm, actually, I don't know what's wrong. Because here the cutout seems fine. Did I change something here? I don't think so. Let's try this. Oh, is it because I didn't change this? Let me try this. Check it. Okay, when you have an item that doesn't work how you uh, want it to work, sometimes the debug can take some time. Uh, sometimes also they have some bug, you just don't know why, and you just redo the process, so you just reclone an, an item and it works. So sometimes it's also a mistake from Scenes for Studio, so we are going to check this. Um, if I can't find a solution here, I will um, obviously end the tutorial, uh, the streaming here because uh, finding the culprit can take some time. So I won't, uh, I will spare you this. And uh, if I find anything, I will write it in the description so you can find what was wrong. So maybe it will solve you um, if any case this happens to you. I wish there were a way to test the object without opening the seams. That's true. That's very true. Okay, that solves it. So I'm going to explain what I did. That's nice. So you can see that it's not that uh, deep. Uh, when I started, I said that the, usually the EA frame are very big and chunky and I didn't like and preferred when it was. Uh, and this one is not that big. I think I like it that way. I can leave it that way, definitely. So we can see that the door works perfectly. So our job is done here. So what did I do to fix the, the problem? I nope. This I went in the cutout in no the C cutout and for table edit entries, and I put two tile in the cutout here, so so it made the cutout larger. Also, I removed the low load because I don't like this portal stuff and sometimes you can keep it. it it's better to keep it but I find it a little um, outdated to do that anyway I think that's it so this is the end of this live stream uh, I will do the color swatches tomorrow because here it's 1 a.m. so I will need to sleep and I will do all the color swatches tomorrow um, and I will post this item so you can download it for free. If you like this video, please subscribe to my channel on YouTube. It will be very helpful. And also, um, I will start to do live stream more often because um, I think uh, people like it. And um, I also uh, started a new Twitch channel and I tend to stream my uh, system making during um, evening when I actually when I'm actually working on my usual sets. So right now I'm working on the elevator sets with the ravishing modes that makes available available the elevators for like uh, houses. So you can actually have um, houses with an elevator inside, or you can uh, maybe fake um, an apartment, for example. 
So I'm, I'm trying to make some new elevators with uh, industrial time and wooden style and like the very aluminum brush style. And you can also uh, customize all the interior so you can have like a huge elevator like in a hotel with a big mirror and everything. So if you're interested, I will um, make this available on my Twitch and you can come see uh, while, I'm, while I'm working and we can chat and you can ask questions. Uh, as soon as I find how to set this uh, software, because I'm not very good with this new st stuff, uh, with Discord and Twitch and everything, I feel old because I don't understand anything, but I will learn because nice people make tutorials. Thank you so much uh, for being here. Thank you so much for liking my content and thank you so much for supporting me on my Patreon. Patreon. It's thanks to you if I am able to do this for a living. It's very nice. My job before was awful and I'm really glad I could quit and do this instead. This is nice. You are nice. Thank you so much. Have a nice day or evening depending on where you are and see you another time. Bye.